Good morning, Africa. I am Godfrey Mutizwa. Welcome to this special edition where we are covering South Africa's fifth democratic elections. We are live from Johannesburg. In the studio with me, I've got guests who will be taking us through some of the issues that we'll be looking at today as we look at uh, what South Africans decide to bring into as the next executive in Africa's second biggest economy. I got that right. Africa's second biggest biggest economy. And uh, with me in the studio is uh, Muteto Nyati, Managing Director of Microsoft South Africa, and uh, Trudy Makaina. She is an independent economist. Gent and lady, welcome. And uh, also joining us later will be Chris Bishop. He will be joining us from the field where he's looking at people, where people are voting and the kind of issues that he's seeing. And as I was driving here into the studio, I can tell you that the roads were empty, meaning that South Africans are exercising their democratic right to choose the next president. Let me bring the conversation to my guest. Can I begin with the lady? Because we are a business station and we want to look at business issues. Muteto today here is a, he's here as a, as a South African exercising his right to choose a government he wants. The fact that we've got this election taking place on time is the fifth time that South Africans are going to the polls to exercise their right to choose a government of their choice. What importance does it have in general in terms of projecting an economy that is working and that is at peace with itself? Well, I think when we look at country risk ratings, yeah. a lot of it always has to do with political stability and whether changes of government are legitimate, constitutional, and are done in accordance with the will of the people. So I think on that score, uh, on that front of um, formal democracy, yeah. we, you know, South Africa would do very well because it's clear that um, whatever other uncertainties there might be there in terms yeah. of assessing the country, when it comes to the basics of elections, um, they conducted in, in a proper manner. Um, there haven't been many allegations, and uh, you know, in the past of um, untoward behaviour or unfair electoral practice. Yeah. So in that sense, you have a, a it projects an image of a strong government, um, a strong country, yeah. um, where there's a, a thriving democracy, yeah. and where people can exercise their choice. Absolutely. So two key things: number one, elections are being held on time. Number two, they are also free and fair, or perceived to be free and fair. Let me come to you, Mteto, because as I said, you're a South African exercising your vote. But but you are also an important component within the South African business landscape because you represent foreign capital. And as she was saying, when people look at a, at a country risk, they look at the fact that uh, the business environment is stable. From where Microsoft stands, how important is this? Uh, it is quite, actually quite important uh, what we are seeing in South Africa today. Uh, in, in fact, what has been happening over the last five elections is quite critical mm -hmm. because uh, when, as I discuss with my colleagues and, and the people I report to yeah. overseas, the things that they continue to be looking at is, uh, are you guys going to have free elections? Is yeah. it going to be fair? Is there no violence? And what does it mean for, <coughs> for the environment of business, the climate? You know? And each and every time we have <coughs> shown our colleagues elsewhere yeah. uh, that we as South Africa actually can do things and yeah. do things well yeah. and they can be comfortable yeah. and that is a very good thing because now we are starting to attract for example as Microsoft more investment into South Africa okay. and Africa versus elsewhere. I'm hoping you're going to announce some more billion dollars to come from Microsoft. <laughs> I saw those results they were very good indeed yeah. so hopefully some of that might not be coming here. I think part of the problem is that some people actually mistake the noise of the democracy as uh, uh, something that is working against the democracy when actually I think we should be celebrating the fact that you can have a wide range of choices mm -hmm. to have in terms of your president and diverse opinions and positions. That is absolutely true. The other dimension around this thing is sometimes we have South Africans who left South Africa yeah. and they, what they are doing overseas is to do undo some of the things, the good things that are being done here. Meaning a little bit of noise, they amplify it there yeah. and they give signals which indicate that things are not working here, yeah. Yeah. Which, which is entirely incorrect. Absolutely. We're joined now on our desk as well by uh, Christo Boetus. He is uh, uh, with our business uh, partners. Thank you, Chris, and mm -hmm. welcome. So Good we're celebrating day. the noise of the democracy. Mm -hmm. Are we right to celebrate the noise of the democracy and not worry too much about whether the candidates are right or wrong? Well, uh, you know, just the fact that we can have free and fair elections, yeah. that uh, everyone can 
voice their opinion. It's very important. Uh, but I'm not a political guy, so uh, <laughs> I, I, I would rather stay out of the pol politics yeah. for, for today. But uh, definitely, I, I think there's, there's, there's stability, there's, there's a foundation, and one can build from there. Yeah. And, uh, and that, from my area point of view, uh, SMEs, small businesses, yeah. I think th that there's a, there's a there's a platform that gets yeah. laid. For the business to work, of course, you do need the politics to work. So it's important we analyze the political environment. But before we talk about the SMMEs, let me come back to you, Trudy, and just talk about some of the economic policies that you have had coming out of these guys. We've had the privilege here at CNBC of hosting all of them, uh, their e particularly those guys that are framing their economic policies. And then we also had a debate with their youth leaders and talking about uh, some of their views on what they want to see uh, in the coming uh, government. From where you stand, what did you hear? Did you pick up anything that makes you concerned? Or did you pick up something that excited you? The different parties have positioned themselves um, across the spectrum, you know, from left to right. Yeah, are they different? Um, I think they're different. Yeah. So, or rather some have differentiated themselves far more than others. So the EFF <coughs> is an obvious example. Um, they have gone with the nationalization route, um, state-led industrialization. I think it keeps, the details keep changing as they keep you know, uh, being challenged. But I mean, it is about expropriation. It is about state ownership. So mm. they've kind of firmly um, put their mask and said, this is yeah. what we're about. Did Whereas, that frighten you? Um, I You're an economist. don't think it frightened me to the extent that I know that they're not going to form a government anytime soon. Okay. And also because a lot of the things that they do, they're propagating are national policy issues. Yeah. So even if they gain dominance in certain provinces or yeah. they're the official op opposition in certain provinces, yeah. it'll never come to pass. And if it had to come to pass, I think there's so many checks and balances in the parliamentary process yeah. um, that some of those ideas will probably never see the light of day. Ntetu? Yeah, uh, uh, looking at the, the political landscape, I think most of the parties are targeting the right issues. For example, the, the question of, of unemployment right. or youth unemployment in particular, jobs yeah. and jobs and jobs, yeah. and it's something that is almost common throughout. All of them, And yeah. that's very important. Yeah. And the question of trying to support small businesses is linked to <coughs> the jobs question as well, yeah. and that's quite common. What concerns me is, is, the, is the noise of the EFFs. Right. And, and, and it's, it's an important noise because uh, on the one hand it's capturing some of the things that some people are feeling yes. like it needs to be done. So it's it good, it's good market, that we yeah. have something like that. Yeah. But if it were to come to pass, yeah. it would really be a bad thing for business in yeah. my opinion. Absolutely. Chris? I, I agree. You know, we need a Let me rephrase the question for you. Mm. Which one would you want to come into government based on their policies on SMMEs? Well, you know, everybody is making uh, the, the noise about job creation, about small business that's important and everything. Yeah. Uh, but government intervention uh, and uh, being responsible for the job creation, it can never work. <coughs> So I would rather support those that say, let's get the legislative environment right. Yeah. Let's get the policies centered around SME development and job creation. Yeah. There, you can, you can get, you know, like for instance, the right financial support uh, programs, the ri right non-financial support programs. Yeah. You know, even uh, you look at, at pre preferential procurement, uh, incentives for job creation. Yeah. Those type of things can 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 work. Now, if you if you look at who is is doing uh, is saying that they want to do that, and less government intervention, then it's the Democratic Party right. and the ANC. They also making the same noises yeah. about a special ministry, etc. And I think that's we need better coordination, yeah. better focused programs on SMEs. Let's talk about that Ministry of Small Businesses, proposed Ministry of Small Businesses, before we get into the deeper economic policies. What's your view on the creation of another uh, ministry within government specifically focused on SMMEs? I, I hope it's not another ministry. 
I hope it is just a reshuffling and then a focus on because we can't afford extra cost. Okay. Uh, but if they can reshuffle and they can put the focus that that ministry yeah. actually uh, coordinate all the initiatives of government and the private sector yeah. to, to be focused on SMEs, then, then it can work. Yeah. Uh, so I'm in favor of that. But, but it must you want it to be done within the current existing structures rather than creation of another uh, ministry. Ndeto, would you agree with the ministry, you work with a, sm a lot of small yeah. businesses yourself, would you agree with a ministry that focuses just on SMMEs? Look, I think already there is a long, a strong focus on SMEs and In, within government. Within government, mm -hmm. and already there are great policies that are trying to enable small businesses. The yeah. biggest problem is really in the execution. It's when you start to see the institutions that have been set up to go and try and do some of these things, yeah, yeah. they are not doing that very well. There is lack of coordination between the various departments. To me, that is really the problem. It's not so much whether the, there is a strong focus. Everybody needs, sees that we need to focus on yeah. this thing. We just need to make sure that things talk to each other. Would that would then, one would argue, be the focus of that ministry. In other words, everybody works up at home, goes into the office and says, right, what am I doing for SMMEs today? As opposed to, he, my name is Rob Davies, I'm coming into the office, I have to talk about the Uruguay round, or I have to talk about uh, the WTO meeting in, I don't know, Caracas or whatever. That, that's really the problem, because yeah. immediately you have a, 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 a department which has got this responsibility. Everybody else will think that it is not part of their responsibility, and yet, right. SME, this whole thing needs to be driven across. Yeah. Everybody needs to be driving it. You know. Okay, where would you stand, Trudy? Mm. I echo that. I think a lot of small businesses. You success, don't want another ministry. No, I think a lot of it depends on the success of many other policies. So, education ministry should be thinking about how mm. they're educating people for entrepreneurship. You know, health should be thinking about um, how the system um, serves small businesses. So, I don't think. Um, a new ministry, it kind of putting it almost in its own little ghetto and then yeah. it's not interconnected <clears throat> with all the other things that make for small business success. So I would say strengthening the existence of existing programs across the ministries mm. um, would be the way to go and strengthening the monitoring and evaluation. Right. Because I think there was like almost like half a billion rand in the last budget to various small business development programs. Yeah. Now it's about enhancing the impact of that. But the impact of that, do you think, would be captured when you have uh, the DTI looking after this side and uh, another minister looking at after the other side? I think they're able to, to get a more integrated view. So if you're in the DTI and you can link them up to the international trade guys, you can take them on missions, yeah. you can give them subsidies, you know, you can give them a package. Um, that's not as easy if you're in a, you know, your own separate yeah. um, structure. So I think an integrated approach um, given some of the things that challenge small business success in this country yeah. um, is what's necessary. An integrated approach perhaps within one ministry might well be the answer. We're talking about South Africa's elections 2004. Would you go so far, Judy, of characterizing the business environment in South Africa as hostile? I would. Um, would. And for some of the reasons that were not even picked up in the insets. Yeah. I think it's very difficult to form a new business shocking me. Um, in South Africa because um, you have all of the legislation that perhaps businesses that are not large enough or mature enough to handle in an emerging economy with a very high unemployment rate. Yeah. One shouldn't be expecting um, you know, a, a new business. You, you'd want them to be encouraged rather than to be hindered. Yeah. But I think the structure of the economy also presents a problem because there's so many monopolies in key industries yeah. that A, it's difficult for anyone to enter. <laughs> 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 it's difficult for anyone to want to enter those industries. <laughs> but secondly, those monopolies also mean high prices for everything. So even state monopolies in terms of high prices for um, ad administered prices, yeah. um, electricity, um, freight, um, you know, freight transport to get goods um, across the country. Yeah. Then there's also inputs. So if you're looking for polymers, if you're looking for steel, yeah. um, there are questions around um, the pricing of that and whether it's How would you attack those two? I want particularly to focus on the, 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 the parastators, the big parastators that are setting prices and also the big players within the economy. So your standard banks, your, 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 your Woolies and your, your, your well, sorry, 
Sorry, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, interestingly, I think all the parties have lashed onto this. I mean, the yeah. DA has been very they strong. Have. They about have. strengthening <coughs> competition policy, so yes. has Ahang, yeah. uh, interestingly. But of course, the ANC government set up the structures that we do have yeah. um, already in terms of uh, competition policy. Yeah. So I think that's one way of looking Would at it. Would you privatize the parastatals? Some, some, not all of them. Because I think there's also a recognition that some will always have universal obligations that don't translate well into um, commercial uh, imperatives. Yeah. So if you, if I mean, I think we should be agnostic to these things. You can privatize yeah. and still give them obligations in terms of that, or you can keep them national but ensure that they're efficient. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be about yeah. nationalization versus. <laughs> I'm that. seeing red flags. I'm but seeing red flags. it should be about <laughs> getting the outcomes of efficiency and also those um, public service obligations you want out of them yeah. without stifling the economy and being too expensive and not offering the kinds of services that you need for a dynamic economy. And how would you tackle the big economy? Players. The big economic players, I think competition policy already does that, yeah. but I think you need broader than that. I think you also need them to come to the table. Yeah. It can't be just about you know prosecuting the construction <coughs> cartel uh, when it's uncovered. It should be beyond that to say we yeah. prosecute them, but you also ensure that these industries think about pricing and yeah. developmental projects yeah. in an appropriate way. Jeta, I'll come to you. I want to go to Chris because, Chris, I wanted you to characterize for me the business environment as we have had harsh, hostile, and also I want your thoughts on what needs to be done to make sure that the business environment is better. Yeah, you know, Godfrey, I, I don't think it's so hostile. Uh, and there you is would not use the word hostile? Yeah, no. Okay. And also what word would you use? Well, I would say it is, it is not uh, as business friendly as, as it, it can, can be. be. Okay. You know? and, and it's just because some uh, entrepreneurs, they just say, let's work around the system. And we, you don't want them to work around the system. Right. Uh, they, they must work with the system, but then the system must be friendly for them. To, yeah, to, yeah to, because that creates thrive. opportunities for corruption. Exactly. And, uh, and if, you, if you think of, of preferential procurement and, uh, you know, just uh, even the, the new BE legislation that's, that's coming about, I mean, it's, it's, it's wonderful objectives, uh, but it is tough for the entrepreneurs to mm. find the right type of businesses that yeah. they can do business with, yeah, yeah. To, to get enterprise development really going in this country. And uh, th so the objectives are really, I can't fault them on the objectives, yeah. but, but it is just how, how is, it, is it, you know, embedded down into the system and yeah. that's when people just throw their arms in the air and say yeah. well yeah. let me rather go without it you know and work around the system and absolutely and then we defeat the object you yeah. know of real job creation and so on yeah Mteto, of course you have the advantage of being south african and the advantage of having a foreigners look at it from an outsider's perspective and the experience of working in other geographies where these environments are different how bad are we Look, uh, as, a, as a country, I think we are not uh, so friendly to business. Right. It's very difficult. Uh, I do understand as a South African, for example, the need for black economic empowerment. And almost all companies in South Africa have embraced that. But the changes that continue to happen, mm. when things have settled and now you kind of like know where you should be going, yeah. and then you, you it gets changed again. So it's, these are the things that frustrate many investors in this country. You need to have stability yeah. so that there can be the predictability. Pe people can plan, plan long term, put resources behind things. Yeah. So that is the other thing that we need to learn. You know, if we change its government, it's still the same ANC government, yeah. but it's different players, they come up with different things. Why don't you keep things the same? Just continue to simplify, keep the things the same, but yeah. try and simplify. What are you saying? The president, when he, if he comes back, sorry, I was going to say. Yeah, if he, he comes he, back. If he, he comes back. He, <laughs> might, he might come, for example, with different ministers yes. and a different crew. Who, You're suggesting who, who that maintain, maintain those who are there. No, maintain the, the policies okay. and the things that the regulation, maintain that. Don't keep changing. For example, BE has been changed. Yeah. You know? And now people who had already been committing to this thing yeah. and driving things, they're saying, I will give up. Yeah, now that gives, it leaves me in a difficult position because 
as, as they say, constant is the, uh, sorry, change is the only constant, really. You yeah. need to continually mm -hmm. reinvent yourself in order to be appropriate. I mean, you guys have had to do it over and over again. Yes. How do we do that while at the same time ensuring the creation, as you are asking for, of a stable environment with consistent policies? It, it is very important to have that stability. Yeah. At the same time, you have to look at the environment and yeah. see whether you and are adapt. Yeah, 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 and adapt. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that before you even are able to learn whether this thing that you are doing is, 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 is achieving its objective okay. Give it you, time to, to work. change, you, know? <clears throat> you need to first understand the implications of this thing yeah. and, and learn from it. And then when you are changing, you are changing in line with your, you know, the insights that you have managed yeah. to capture. Okay. Yeah. I want us to talk about uh, the three parties' economic policies. Mm -hmm. And I want us to talk to them uh, about the potential impact they will have on the business environment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm picking the three. Uh, this is in my head that are going to be the three. <laughs> Let me go. Here we go. So ANC, DA, and I think EFF yeah. will have something to say about this election and may well have something to say after the election. Let me start with you. When you look at the ANC, and I'm picking the ANC because they're the governing party, and in all probability they will be back. When you look at what they are saying, do you get any sense that when we come back, we'll get a rejuvenated government that will make meaningful, real change? We'll get a government that's being pulled in different directions. I mean, you have the ANC almost as a centrist party, yeah. but with many, many broad churches um, with, or broad sects within uh, that broad tent. And you have the EFF then pulling it to the left. Yeah. And so the ANC will start responding by saying, we'll have state-led industrialization. We will keep shareholding in gas um, uh, prospects. Yeah. They'll keep doing these uh, policies that seem to be like almost synthetic nationalization okay. to try to, to respond to, to answer that. answer to the noise that's coming but from the, the other side. But then the DA pulls them to the right. Yeah. Uh, and the DA will be saying, well, we want privatization. We want efficiency. Yeah. And so they'll try to respond to that. So I think they, there might be a bit of... Um, schizophrenia in terms to, of, of meeting these different challenges yeah. uh, and opposition.